Hey guys, it's LaTanya and I'm back with a video that has been requested quite a few times the past few years so I thought with it being almost July, this is probably the point of the summer for a lot of us where we start thinking about our classroom for next year and if you're a brand new teacher getting ready to go into your first year teaching, this is probably the time where you're maybe in a little bit of a panic about setting up your very first classroom. So I've had a few people ask me to do a video on how I created my quote unquote dream classroom. Um, as some of you may know, my classroom was featured in Scholastic Teacher Magazine last year, which was a huge honor for me. And because of that, a lot of you um, kind of sought out some tips or advice that I would offer in setting up a classroom. So I thought I would make a video for you guys on that. Now, before I get started, there are a couple of disclaimers that I want to offer when setting up a classroom or when you're looking at my classroom and wondering, you know, how did I do that or how did I finance that? Um, so the disclaimers are this. Number one, uh -huh. I had been teaching for a good 10 years before I created a classroom that I felt was quote unquote Pinterest worthy. And the only reason I was able to do that was because I had a parent that had donated quite a bit of money to my classroom and his company matched his donation. And I only had a certain amount of time to spend that money. And a time period came where I had not spent any of the money, I think, and I had to figure out how was I gonna spend it. And I decided, you know what? I can redo my classroom and that's how I'll spend the money and so that's what I did. Now this is not my current classroom, this was my previous classroom at my old school. So had I not had that parent donate that money, there is no way that I would have been able to do what I did with my previous classroom. And that previous classroom is what kind of sparked me doing what I did with my current classroom. Because prior to that, uh, my classrooms were, they weren't terrible, but in retrospect, they were kind of a little bit of a hot mess. I was all over the place. I, my walls were different colors. There was one color here, one color there. I had no cohesion. I had no vision. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I thought the more color in my classroom, the better. And I was just kind of all over the place. So luckily that opportunity came for me to really sit down and think about, okay, if I was going to do a class classroom makeover, and I actually refer to it as extreme makeover classroom edition, um, what would I do? And right around that time, I was on Pinterest and looking up different classrooms, and I think what happened is I clicked on one classroom that I really liked and found a link to school girl style, and that's kind of how everything started for me. So the first disclaimer is that it took me 10 years to be able to get to a point where I was creating a classroom that I felt was Pinterest worthy. I was only able to do that because I had funds donated. And disclaimer number three is that um, in that classroom, a lot of the items that I use have been repurposed, refurbished, spray painted, repainted, bought off of Craigslist, uh, donated, and things like that. So I really tried to minimize the amount of money that I spent. So that's the disclaimer on my first classroom. The other disclaimer, I told you there was a lot I wanna give is that I am someone who's pretty uh, sensitive to my overall environment, like the aesthetics of my environment. So I'm very much into being in a space, whether it's my home or my classroom, that I feel is well decorated. I don't do well with a lot of um, undecorated area or space. And I think that makes me a little bit more apt to spend more time putting a classroom together, more energy, and in some cases more money than what others would be willing to spend. So I wanna say all that for those of you that are brand new to setting up a classroom so that you don't feel like, oh, Latanya's classroom must have looked like this from the very first day that she started teaching because that is completely and totally not the case. I will be showing you pictures of my very first classroom at the end of this video and you will see that my classroom looked nothing like that. I used what I had, did what I could, but I will say I was perfectly happy in that classroom and I was very proud of that classroom. It's just nice to see the progression that I've made over the course of my career. So with that being said, I'm gonna try and break this video down into some very practical steps and try and think about the mental steps that I take when setting up my classroom and hopefully that helps you guys come up with some ideas for yourself. So I might be consulting with my notes, but either way, let's get started. So the first thing that I would say when setting up your classroom or changing your classroom is you really wanna take a moment to sit down and ask yourself, what is it that you want from your classroom? How do you want your classroom to make you and your students feel when you're in it and what what do you want your classroom to look like? So for me, when I knew I was gonna be setting up a new classroom, I knew that I wanted my classroom to feel very calming and soothing when I was in it and when my students were in it. And I knew that I did not want my classroom to look like a classroom. I actually wanted my classroom to look more like someone's living room 
that happen to have student work in it. Um, so sit down and give yourself the time to think about that. What do I want to feel in my classroom? What do I want my students to feel? And what do I want it to look like? And let that guide you. Once you figure that out, especially with thinking about how do you want to feel, a lot of times that will lead you to understand or or figure out what colors you want in your classroom. So for me, I knew I wanted my classroom to feel calm. And um, I immediately thought of my living room at home because I feel very calm when I'm in this room. And I think a lot of that is because the color schemes that I chose. They're very muted colors, very neutral colors. My walls are very faint gray. That's my dog. Uh, she's not calm right now. And so, that for me said, okay, so if you feel calm in your living room and your walls are gray, well then you're gonna wanna recreate that same feeling in your classroom. And so my color scheme became gray, yellow, white with touches of gold. So I knew my walls were not gonna be yellow, even though that was gonna be one of my colors because yellow is not gonna make me feel calm, but I knew gray would give a very soothing, calming feeling when someone walked in. Um, and then the accent colors just were mimicked after my living room. Once you do that, then you can start thinking about, okay, if those are my colors, gray, yellow, white, and accents of gold for me, now I need to look for things that kind of fit that. So for me, once I had that figured out, I immediately went over to the Schoolgirl Style website to see if she had any packages that would fit with that color scheme. And luckily she did. She had a package that was literally called yellow and gray. So um, I bought that package. Those packages are nice because they are about $40 and they come with a lot of different resources that a teacher would use to decorate her classroom. And so for about $40, you're gonna get a lot of pieces in that package that will help you to create this cohesive environment in your classroom. So for example, you'll get banner headers for your walls, you'll get an alphabet set, um, you'll get calendar headings, you'll get binder um, covers, labels that you can make, and it's all gonna look the same and follow the same color scheme. One of the things that I learned from School Girl Saw also, when you're coming up with the colors of your classroom, is you typically wanna try and stick with about three colors. No more than that, because more than that starts to feel very, um, it, could, it could just feel very chaotic for people coming in. So try and stick to three colors. So once I did that, found my package at School Girl Style, the rest was really kind of easy for me. I had to get the paper hung up. For me, I'm someone that likes my paper to be hung floor to ceiling. I know not everyone's able to do that because of your walls, but in my classroom, my walls are complete bulletin board from the top to the bottom. So a lot of people have asked me in um, the classroom tour, how do I have that paper hanging? And it's just stapled into the wall because all of my walls are giant bulletin boards. If you don't have that ability, I would just suggest that you cover up as much of the wall as you can. Um, I just don't like to see any bare wall unless it's like an actually nicely painted wall that you can decorate. So I covered it from floor to ceiling with gray paper. I chose my borders as accents based on the designs from School Girl Style. So I looked at the yellow and gray package that I purchased, kind of saw that the um, theme was kind of geometric in style, and so I made sure to choose border that was the same. Since I wanted my classroom to feel like a living room and feel very modern, I knew that that meant none of my borders could have cartoon characters on it. I didn't want anything that was very juvenile. I wanted it to be very modern and sophisticated and that's how I kind of chose my, my um, borders. So that was the first step. It's just getting my walls up, getting the borders up, um, and just knowing what my main colors were gonna be in my classroom. Quick note on color scheme before I move on to the next part is I also try and make sure I choose a color scheme that is gender neutral so that it doesn't feel overly feminine in the classroom and it doesn't feel overly masculine in the classroom. So just try and keep that in mind if that's something that is important to you. Once you have just the base foundation of your classroom set up, you've papered your walls, the walls are bordered, you know your color scheme, you know the overall look and feel you want, then you can start buying a couple of items that are decorative but functional. So the next step was then I went out and I started buying functional items that I was going to put on the wall. It wasn't a whole lot because my walls are pretty bare when the school year starts. So for me that meant buying things for my information wall, so a calendar set that would go with my color scheme. Um, um, student jobs that I was going to put on there, calendars that I was going to have up, a couple of motivational posters because what classroom would be complete without them, but that was really it. And if you stick to just some basic colors, typically you will be able to find things like calendar sets and things of that nature that match 
pretty easily. So even though School Girl Style offers those products in the package that I bought, I always end up buying um, a calendar set from a teacher store because I like the size of those and that's just kind of been what I've done. So I buy decorative items, but they have to have a function. They just can't be decorations to be decorations. And it's typically for my information wall, like I just said, and then student display walls. So in my classroom, the only student display wall that I fully develop is the writing wall. All the other walls just have that banner header that says this is for social studies, this is for science, but the only wall that I actually put a banner up and then have spots for student work is my writing wall. A huge tip that I found this year is using scrapbook paper as the mount for student work. The nice thing about scrapbook paper is it's pre-cut, you don't have to worry about that. You can find it in a lot of different uh, designs that go with your color scheme and it just adds an extra layer of design to your classroom. As far as how to clip the student work, I highly recommend buying clothespins from the Dollar Tree or a teacher store and then spray painting those or painting those a color that goes along with your um, color scheme and then you can buy a little ribbon, make little bows and hot glue gun them on those clips. Aside from that, the rest of my walls are left bare. Once I've bought some functional items that are decorative in nature but still have a purpose, then I move on to like the pretty things. And this is probably where I spend the bulk of my money or this is where I kind of go out of budget sometimes. And the pretty things are things like including real pieces of furniture in your classroom. So for me, that was a nice chair for the uh, classroom library, a nice desk chair, a nice chair for my um, guided reading table, a nice table to put my teacher stuff, because I really feel like the more real pieces of furniture that you can add into your classroom, the more homey it feels, the more cozy it feels. So if I can replace metal bookcases with real bookcases, I'm definitely gonna do that. Now, a lot of people avoid doing that because that can be expensive. My response to that would be, it can be, but I use those items for years to come. So for example, my bookcases from Ikea, I think this is my fourth year using them. And I always buy items that when they've run their course, please excuse my phone, when they've run their course in my classroom, then, um, I make sure I have a purpose for them in my home. And if I can't do that, better believe I'm gonna sell that piece of furniture to someone else down the line. And I've done both of those things. I've either brought it back to my house or I've sold it to someone else when I'm moving on to a new classroom. So um, you can spend as much or as little as you want. You gotta keep your own budget in mind, but just try and make sure you're choosing items that you really do like and that really could work in your classroom or um, at home if you needed to do that. Now. With that being said, there's a couple of things I wanna say in terms of um, affording this, and I'm trying to speak really quickly because my battery is going to die. As far as affording it, some of the things that I would suggest, I already mentioned school girl style because you will get a ton of stuff in that package in terms of cohesion in your classroom. You just have to worry about being able to print and color and um, laminating and things like that. For me, I'm able to do a lot of that at school. Um, I do buy my own cardstock, but as far as the printing and the laminating, I've been able to do that there. So that's one way to kind of keep the affordability or keep within a budget. Second, um, pin things that you like and buy progressively. So when I did my very first classroom, I was pinning things left and right, and I would just buy things progressively over the course of months. I didn't buy things all at once. Another tip I would um, say, just reiterate, is to spend smart. If you're gonna buy something, make sure that it's something that you can get multiple years of use out of. So if you're gonna buy a piece of furniture, make sure you're gonna be using that piece of furniture for multiple years to come. Um, another thing is, this is probably the biggest piece of advice, is make a decision and commit to it. So I spend all this money on my classroom because I know this classroom is gonna look like this for at minimum three years. I probably spent doing this classroom probably close to $1,000, but I will not be redoing that classroom for at least three years, and I won't redo that classroom until I really absolutely positively have to do it. So for me, it's worth it because I'm not doing it this year, next year, or the following year. So just whatever you choose, make it something that you could live with for a few years so that you're not going through this every single year. 
The last piece of advice is um, I saw a person do this when I wasn't in teaching. I was working in banking and she was about to start teaching and she was, I think in college still, she had actually set up a savings account where she just put a little money, a little bit of money into it every month and it was specifically for her classroom. And even then, even though I wasn't a teacher and I had no clue as to how much it cost, I thought what a smart idea. So if you're in school to teach or you know your new classroom's coming or next year is gonna be the year where you transition to a classroom, just start saving $20 here, $20 there so that you don't feel guilty when you're spending money putting your classroom together. And lastly, I wanna say this again, I know I've said it before, just because you see all the other teachers on Instagram buying it, doing it, does not mean that you have to buy it or do it. If it's a product or an item that you see and you think it's cute, but you don't know how you would use it or it does not go with your vision or your theme, just don't buy it. Just admire it in other people's classrooms because that's how you end up with a lot of things purchased that you've never really used. And that happens to the best of us. That happens to new teachers as well as old teachers. So those are my tips on setting up a classroom. I really do hope that it was helpful to kind of explain my thought process when I set up this last classroom. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. I was exhausted last summer and sometimes it takes a lot of money, but just spend your money wisely and make this an investment for many years years to come. Now, the fun part is I will be adding pictures of my very first classroom, maybe even my second classroom at the very end of this. So please take a look. Know that it took me a decade to get to where I was at. And as long as you're having your classroom and you feel comfortable and you feel good about it, that's all that matters. Um, that's just the thing that you really need to keep in mind. You got to do what's right for your budget, your personality, what you need out of your classroom, and don't worry about much else. So with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. Um, I will link the tours of my previous classrooms, or I will link the classroom tour of my previous classroom as well as my classroom before that and any other thing that I think would be helpful to you. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one and happy classroom decorating if you're doing that. Bye guys.